Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios here in Cumming, Georgia, it's time for Stewarding Family Wealth. And now, here's your host. Good afternoon, folks. This is Randy Brunson with Centurion Advisory Group on this episode of Stewarding Family Wealth. We are back with a second episode with my dear friend, Hal Schlinger. Hal, welcome to the studio this afternoon. Thanks, Randy. Yes, you, you and I, what, what did we cover in that first episode? We covered theater and lacrosse and uh, started talking about this whole life experience of being at peace in the middle of a sort of a dissonant world or something. Very much, and, and finding joy and happiness and bad humor. Yes, <laughs> So, all right, one, one, one dad joke. You heard about the fellow that it was uh, ended up getting shot with an upholstery gun, yeah, for like two hundred and forty times, but the doctor said he's fully recovered. So, <laughs> yay! Okay, all right. Now, hopefully, if anybody's still listening, let's move on to something other than those <laughs> terrible, terrible dad jokes. So, um, but let's talk about your let's talk about your career experience. Now, you've you've been immersed in the healthcare or healthcare financing space for several years. Yes. Yeah. Okay. We, and and financing side of it is yes. So, employee benefits, health insurance is is the way to look at what I do. Okay. So, you pick the doctor, you pick what care you need, you decide how much effort you want to put into prevention or how much time you want to put into just reactive care. That's fine. I'm not here, I'm not here to judge, right? thank goodness. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm here to help you keep as much money in your pocket from health insurance so that they can hang out with you and, and grow their wealth. Okay. All right. So, so the, um, so, so any of us can make our own individual decisions about how we care for our health. Right. Stati- let me ask you this question. Just statistically, uh, is, is, it, is it a given that the more intentional we are about our health and things like diet, exercise, um, like we spoke about the, uh, earlier, uh, our mental health being, being refreshed in our minds, but the more intentional we are about diet, exercise, lifestyle choices, generally the lower our health bill during most of our life? I mean, is there a correlation in that? or not intuitively i would say yes i don't have evidence okay i think everybody else I, th- I think there's enough studies that show that prevention lifestyle choices and and by the way lifestyle choices can, should include how much time you sleep okay tell me more typical person if you if you look back and i'm going back to my silicon valley days was wow i slept i only had four hours of sleep last night like, oh that was almost like a badge of honor Mm. Um, and you see that with a lot of business people, um, how many hours they work and how many hours they were doing all these things and how little sleep they had. And yet there's enough studies that show six and seven, eight hours is really what people need. And it differs by person. So again, I'm not telling, I'm not, you don't give out financial advice without disclaimers That's right. and I'm not giving out medical advice. Uh, I'm trying to give out more stories because there are people who, need eight hours of sleep or more. And there are people who, who can do very well on six or seven. Right. It's intentional though. To your point, you're being intentional about how much sleep you have. You're intentional about what you eat and how much you eat. Um, it, it's not always about what you eat, but how much you eat. Mm-hmm. Right? The, we can do the simple fat. The simple thing is calories in calories out and your body does use calories just by resting, but it may not be enough to offset what you're eating. Right. So to your point a moment ago, yes, the, the more intentional you are with your health, the likelihood is that you will have less health issues and therefore lower costs. Right. And it, it, it leads to a quality of life and there, there's, it's easy to find yes. studies. You can find uh, government sponsored studies by the various uh, government organizations that study these kinds of things, right. private foundations, medical uh, associations of every sort and description study. How many hours of sleep do we need? What, what's an optimal diet given these variables or how much water do we need to drink? Or uh, is there, a, <laughs> is there, a, <laughs> Oh, well, you just brought up the tough one. When I, you get to a certain age, how much water do you not want to drink after five o'clock in the afternoon? You know, but so, so my, my my wife, my wife and I have this ongoing conversation because she's a nurse practitioner. So yeah. she, she's trained and educated and she knows what she's doing and she spends time with people who knows what they're doing. So she's got a really good community and a really good experience. Right. And then there's me. I'm just sitting there going that 
if you drink enough water and you have enough movement, exercise, whatever, that it takes care of a lot of things. I agree. But she reminds me not everything. And she's right. <laughs> she's right. I try to simplify things. Not it's everything, a, but. Right. It's just a good starting place, to, which goes back to your bigger point about you need to be somewhat intentional. Yes. And by the way, hydrate. Yes, it really works. It does. It does. Intentionality. That's, uh, that's a good word. Intentionality. I will tell you what I've found. Th- this is so interesting. I don't come back to you. But uh, as, as people come to us and say, hey, let's have a conversa- conversation about being a client. What I have found is those who tend to f- seek us out and those who generally are the best clients yeah. ha- have chosen yeah. – have chosen to be intentional about their lives. Yes. They're intentional about their work and about if, if they have family or other engagements. It's not, it's not just they don't drift. They're, they don't just drift through life. They're very intentional. You know? and, and, and so it's with what they eat, the rest they get, if they de-link from the rest of the world to maintain mental health, you know, which is the way I do it. But. Right. To your point, those are the kind of people you want to help. They're, yes, and they're they're easier to work with. So for sure. Yes. What, what, one of the reasons I wanted to I wanted to talk with you today specifically about um, uh, healthcare financing, health insurance, creating stuff uh, is because a couple of years ago you invited we invited you in to help us, and I'm just so pleased with with how that's worked for our people. I think we've installed an HSA and 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 some of those kinds of things. So I've been very pleased. I know Stephanie who who actually handles this internally for us. She's been very pleased. You've helped her a lot. And right. when, when I hear from my people, oh, this person really helps, like, okay, keep, keep, keep their name. Let's keep them in our world because, right. you know, those are the people you can depend on and go to, you know, and you've, right. you've done that for so, so well. And I really, really appreciate that. And then the, the added bonus is your, your wife is a nurse practitioner. So it, just within the household, and right. I, I've heard you talk about the, uh, I'm not sure if it's the healthcare delivery system or healthcare financing as being broken, maybe both, but if, if you would, just take a few minutes and share with us what, what you see when it comes to health care delivery um, in, a, in an ideal world. What would Hal do to fix it? Um, since we don't live in utopia yet, um, wh- what are some practical things that I as an employer can do to be intentional about providing a good, healthy selection of benefits to my employees in a way that encourages employees to do well, to be intentional, and works financially for the business. So that's a tall order, but go for it. Wow, you're gonna. This is fun for me. Yes. Um, so you're right. I tell people that I think the healthcare system, not the providers. I think the system is terribly, terribly broken. It's it's not. And, it's, and the free, there's nothing wrong with a free market. The insurance companies should be motivated to make money. Right. And the doctors should be paid a fair price. And the hospitals paid a fair price. And we should contribute a fair amount of money. But somewhere in that, it's all broken. And the first place I say that it's broken is you, Randy, really never paid your doctor. That's right. Uh, now, Stephanie's a different story because we would talk about what she does and, and, and you can pay cash for things. Um, if you're not paying cash, then you're asking the you're giving money to the insurance company, and you're asking the insurance company to negotiate on your behalf. That sounds reasonable until you realize that there's no transparency. That's right. You don't know what the doctor is actually getting paid. You only know what the doctor billed for, and then there's this magic discount, and then there's your share as the patient, and then the employ the the insurance company share. And most people don't even understand what an explanation of benefits, an EOB, right. they don't know what it is. Or when they see it, they only look on the column on the right that says, you owe this and say, well, can I afford it? Do I have the money? Is it fair? And not know how it got there. So a key problem with the broken healthcare system is lack of transparency. And the federal government has tried to do that. And one of the hospitals in town didn't even publish its prices as required by law and accepted a fee uh, 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 the penalty and just paid the penalty wow so they just decided it was easier to pay the penalty than to post prices yes and posting prices creates problems but 
So it's not that the hospital did anything wrong other than not follow a piece of, of legislation. What they're trying to do, though, is figure out how do they pay for all the things and how do they generate revenue. So that's where the whole system is broken. Okay. And, and without going down that tangent so much as as an employer, I would hope an employer would say, if, I ha- if I've got the same broker for the last five years and we haven't changed the way we're doing business in the last five or more years, you might want to talk to me. And I say that because there are things that have changed that increase transparency and that engage the employees better because wellness plans sadly don't work. There was a really substantial study done with, um, I want to say Sam's Club. I get it mixed up between Sam's Club and Costco. But I think it was Sam's Club. And it was 10,000 employees. And they asked, they gave everybody options to do a wellness plan. And one group signed up for the wellness plan and one group didn't sign up for it. And then there was a third group that they identified that signed up for the wellness plan but never earned the points or the bonuses. The measurement of success of that wellness program was not how many people participated, but did it drive down the claims that those employees had because they needed health care, right? That really would be the measurement. Did I drive down the cost of health care? And the answer was no. Interesting. The people who participated in a wellness plan were already healthy. They were already randy. So they were already being intentional. So they they were they were already doing the activities that were laid out in the wellness plan. And so they just okay, since I'm already doing this, let me go ahead and participate in this and pick up whatever the bonuses and incentives were built in. Right. But it didn't cause. But but just the big company that promoted it did not cause a behavior, others to a behavior pre- change. It didn't cause a behavior change. Thank you. That was right. what you're looking. Um, yeah. Right. Okay. You even had a group of people who signed up, but. They had intentions, but they couldn't actually deliver on, they couldn't actually change their behaviors. But the road to the river Styx was paved with good intentions. <laughs> <laughs> well said, yeah. Yeah. So I think, I think when you look at employers and what they can do, one is decide that they're open to a new idea. Uh, second, that they would uh, like to be a little bit more involved in some behavior changes. Um, when I make a presentation to somebody, I will tell you that there's um, five levels and you can walk, you can crawl, walk, run, jump, or fly. Okay. Right? Most people say, oh, it's crawl, crawl, walk, or run. It's like because, the compli- because healthcare is so complicated, there's enough different pieces that you can, that, that, that now I use five options, five levels. And the whole point is to figure out what's comfortable for you. Um, one of the things we have, um, Alexandro is with um, Fit Mind Counseling, and she comes to our walks periodically, and she'll talk with us about how do you change your behaviors. As she's a um, mental health specialist, a, mm-hmm. therap- a therapist, and she will point out sometimes take baby steps to do this one thing to, to do something different. Just take a baby step, or my my m- more recent favorite that she taught me was. Think about something you're already doing. Is there a way to change that by adding something on? Like in our case, we were talking about walking. Is there something that you do, like listening to a podcast? If you like podcasts, instead of doing it while you're listening in your car, why not go for a walk and listen to the podcast? That would be an example of how she would connect a podcast with a behavior change of I need to do more walking. Well, where I don't have time to walk. I don't, where am I going to walk? You can solve all that if you if you hook it on to something you're already doing that you like. I love listening to podcasts. Okay. So, so that's another example. I think the bottom line here, and then we can decide where you want to take the conversation, is that there are several levers that you can pull that you can change for an employer. If the employer says, I know that employee benefits attract and retain employees, and it also keeps them productive, those are, not, those are good things for your business. And there's nothing unethical. There's nothing wrong about pointing out, I'm offering health insurance because it's going to attract and retain employees. That's why health insurance is an, is an employee benefit from the 40s and the 50s when there was a wage freeze after the, after the war. The federal government said, we're freezing wages. So one of the companies said, oh, well, then I'm going to offer medical care in addition to the wage that I can't raise. Right. 
And since then, it's never turned back. And employers have realized, if I can offer you this benefit, one, you're going to know that I appreciate you more than somebody who just gets a, whatever the core weight of plain wage is. Um, and then you're going to retain them because you're doing something that they value. And, and that's, that's what we're doing. So we're doing something that will attract and retain employees. And if you do some of the things that we're talking about here, um, you're engaging your employees to be a little healthier. And it's not a wellness plan, sadly. As much as I like them and as much as I sponsor Walk With a Doc, so we go out and get people to walk, I know more people who don't join me than do. Right. Um, it's just trying to get people engaged. And I think this goes back to our earlier conversation, which was, what's our purpose? Right. Our purpose is to make people successful. Yes. Uh, whether it's our company, but I, I love the fact that you can find some CEOs that will say that they're, some of the things they're most proudest of is that they gave 20, 50, 100 families income to live. Yes, yes. That's something to be proud of. It's not that you hired somebody. It's that you've given them a, you've given them a job that they enjoy that has meaning and they can afford whatever lifestyle. You've done that. You've provided families it's, it's the old adage, you know, you didn't, you didn't give them fish. You gave them a means to fish. You taught them how to fish. And they are being self-sufficient because your company is successful. You're, you're right. The, 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 just two or, three, two or three random thoughts. About five years ago, I was, um, I was experiencing some balance-related issues. Okay? So go through all the tests. Physical, and, not mental. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> My, now, my children would say that I've been experiencing mental imbalance for like decades. Okay. Yeah. But hey, they're the kids. They're, so, they're supposed to say those things. Yeah. But, um, but no, physical, physical balance related to hearing loss and some different things of that nature. So I went through a variety of tests and rehab and, and some of those kinds of activities. And at the time, I was participating in what is referred to as a health care expense sharing arrangement mm -hmm. there, there are several of those in the marketplace and i was participating in one right uh, not not insurance at all um mm -hmm. so when i would show at the doctor's office or you know because when you call to make an appointment or they call you there's there's three things they want they want your name your date of birth and your insurance information and not in that order and not in that order they want your insurance, insurance information <laughs> first your date of birth then right. they want your name okay right. but that's the order of what they're looking for is your insurance information right. then your date of birth then your name okay. all right so so um i would always tell them that i'm self-pay okay and i remember this one experience this this is common okay so i, I drive to one of the north side hospital rehab locations okay walk in uh tell the lady i'm self-pay and the rack rate, what I call the rack rate, mm -hmm. or the amount that they would have billed the insurance company or whomever, was fourteen hundred dollars. Okay, but I paid at time of service. It was three seventy five, a seventy five percent discount for cash at time of service, and over and over and over, because this 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 experience lasted about eighteen months, and so I, I made a variety of rehab visits and so on and so forth, always self pay. And the standard discount was 75% off, off of what I paid 25% in mm -hmm. cash of what they were billing the insurance company. And so it was just an interesting observation that their, their bean counters and the people that do their number crunching had determined that the cash price of service was 25% and they could pay their bills on that versus what they were billing the insurance company because of the the discounts already built in that the insurance companies or Medicare was not going to pay or the cost of turning the money, the cost and time of turning the money, all those kind of things. It was just really interesting uh, observation. So in the conversations, when you say, what does an employer do? If an employer is intentional, wants to be intentional about solving yes. this situation, that's part of the conversation I have with them is what do you think is a fair price for not the insurance, but a fair cost for the rehab you had or whatever. Right. And, and they don't know. Yeah, I, I don't have any idea. And a lot of the providers don't even know, unless they own the practice, they don't know what the charges are or they don't know what the Medicare rates are. So they don't know what to charge. But what's fascinating is if you talk to a business owner and you say, how much do you ever discount your business by? 
if you're running whatever whatever you're doing, how much if, if I buy volume or I buy over a long period of time, how much of a discount will you give? And typically people will say five and ten, maybe fifteen percent of a discount from my open rate from my rack rate to to something because you're a good customer, a volume customer. You bought right. you right. bought two of these. When I sell insurance and I say med- medical, if, if you sign up for dental with medical, I can give you usually a one or two percent discount for for bundling. Okay, we get all that, and yet you're right. The hospital you had an experience of seventy five percent, and I talk to people, and and one of the things that I try to be different to some of the my other other people who are brokers is I will try to consider myself either an advocate or find them an ad, a professional advocate on their behalf because people think, oh, I and I had this the other day. Somebody said they got an offer. They, they were told, here's how much it's going to be, but if you pay now, it'll, we'll, we'll take 20% off. And they thought 20% off. They didn't know what it was off of what, but they thought 20% off was good. And it's only because people are not close to the healthcare system because it's big and scary and, and it's complicated and there's a lot of money. And by the way, I don't want to die. Uh-huh. So let's just do this. Yeah. So, okay. Right. And I think that's where it gets troublesome for people is um, they don't know what they can and can't do. Um, I had the good fortune through my Rotary Club to do a presentation with um, one of the doctors from Wellstar. And those guys are great. Really good people. And we went ahead and said, the presentation was, uh, well, can you ever say no to your doctor? My doctor says this, I should try this, I should do this, I need to do that. You know, aside from the fact that you say, no, I'm not going to stop eating, you know, or cut out sugar or something. Yeah. Outside that. But when a doctor says, here's, here's something I want you to do, it is okay to say no. And the doctor from Wellstar and I were on the, on the presentation together, and we were standing there together saying, you should say no, and here's why it's going to save you money on the insurance side, and let me show you this and that. So if a doctor says, you should have a test done, understand why why is that doctor having to do that why is the doctor suggesting that test now it may be there's protocol that the doctor's following that whether you do or don't fit in you need to be clear about it's just okay to be engaged and you said this before about being intentional right and that's where i hope those who are listening will realize be intentional be engaged you don't need to be overwhelmed those of us who are also on the sales business development side know there's a phrase that says show up and throw up. And it's a way of trying to get people to go, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to throw up everything I know about this business or whatever your, whatever the topic is. And you're wasting everybody's time. So let's just know that when you come into the conversation, we don't want to overwhelm you with too much information, but that's where the engagement is. Tell me how much you want to know. When have I told you enough? Please keep asking questions. I'm going to answer. I'm going to answer all your questions, even the little ones or the odd ones or the what ifs. But don't don't think that there's too much information for you to understand. There's there's the right amount when you get engaged. We'll answer your questions. Uh, we'll, we might tell you a few things that you you didn't mention that you might want to be particularly care, caring about but then you're going to make the decisions. And that's our job is to make it easier for you. So if I'm hearing you well, it looks like our time's about wrapped up, uh, about finished here. But if I'm hearing you well, um, employees or simply um, patients or people that use a healthcare system, doesn't matter what your relationship is to the healthcare system, each of us needs to be intentional and engaged, ask questions, sort of put ourselves in charge of our own health. Yes. And, and as soon as I hear you say that, I think, wow, I am so busy. I got my family. I got all these obligations. I don't have, I don't have time to get engaged in one more thing. And that's why I'm saying get engaged, at least take a step or two. Yes. You don't need to, when I said crawl, walk, or run, you don't need to run, but just crawl a little bit and get, go find an, a broker and I try to self, describe myself as a recovering broker yes. and try to be more of an educator and a consultant. Right. Try to find one of us and, let's, and just ask a few questions and see where it goes. And, well, you know, just very briefly, I watched um, my parents, I watched Teresa's parents, all, all, 
all of them born in the 30s. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I watch them as they approach the last couple of years of their life. And I'm watching this with my mother in law now, who's the last one living. She's 88. Um, generally, they took a very passive approach with their doctors. If the doctor said, do this, it's like, they just did it. Yes. Okay. Yes. But part of that's just a generational thing. Now what I'm watching is my wife has a variety of medical challenges of start of lupus nephritis. And, and so it's been an interesting 18 months. And it's been fascinating for me to go and sit and listen to the doctors because I've sort of screened and filtered through this business thing on the one hand. And on the other hand, I'm waiting for somebody to say, hey, Teresa, how are you doing? Why don't we, why don't we sort of step back for a minute and ask ourselves, how can we help Teresa be healthy? And nobody, nobody in the medical profession is asking that question. All right. And so it took Teresa more than a year, but to her credit and with some encouragement from me, uh, she started asking questions, evaluating, say, okay, I'm not going to do this. I am going to do this. How about if I start learning some different things? Let's go talk to somebody that's not fully immersed in the American health, in the American medical system, you know, and in in this case, it's a naturopath. So, um, but what I'm watching is that she's been down this path now for 18 months and she's not well. Mm. And She's been taking all these meds and just the, tr- it's like, she's realized that nobody is watching out for Teresa except Randy and Teresa. And so it's, it's changing how she's engaging. I, I will put one favorable comment for her doctors or, and other doctors is if she doesn't ask for something, they're not paid, they're not compensated, they're not measured in a lot of cases. So they're going to do what they do, and they're doing good things, but they may stop short just because she didn't ask. You're, you're right. I, I understand exactly. Here, here's my interpretation of that, okay? Um, when clients come to us, we charge them for it. We don't sell products. Our compensation is not Im- embedded in in products that we offer. It's just that's not our business model. Okay, and so clients have to be very intentional about coming to us. And if someone's going to stroke a check payable to our firm, whether it's something we invoice or through some other means, there's a variety of ways to do that. But if that's the case, my built-in automatic assumption is that they are looking for our advice about the intersection of life, business, and money. And I'm going to be bold enough to say, ask all these questions, spend lots of time asking questions, but be bold enough to say, here's what I believe you need to do. What I'm watching are incredible physicians, wonderful doctors, wonderful, every one of them, wonderful people, very well trained, good at what they do, right? Ex- outstanding. And you show up, and they pull up their monitor, they have they log into their monitor, and they say, your test results are, your numbers are here. And it doesn't matter if it's the, the, this particular set of blood tests to evaluate kidney function, or this to evaluate hemoglobin, or this to evaluate the impact of the lupus medicine, or um, this medicine that stabilizes heart. It doesn't matter. What they look at is, are her numbers between these right. ranges? right. That's what they're trained to do. And if the numbers are in the normal range, or if the numbers are improving, then let's reduce your meds. If they're not getting the results they want, let's change, increase, that kind of thing. And as long as they're getting that result, they're good. I'm not faulting the individuals. I am challenging the American medical system to take care of people, train the frontline people who are wonderful people. And now, I don't have any reason to believe that in my lifetime this is going to happen. I'm going to push back, and I know we're out of, about yeah, out of time. We, yeah, we need, yeah. It's already happening. Is it really? It's wonderful. already happening. Okay, good, 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 good. And those are the kind of things that I said as a recovering broker, I will spend my time advocating and, and coaching 
because there are there are a lot of great people. You've already mentioned it. They are. They are and, absolutely. And there, and there are ways to get the better care as opposed to checking you between the lines. Okay, everything's fine. So I think we can just we can agree on there is a huge problem because it's developed over a generation. And the good news is there are insurance companies, there are doctors and hospitals, and there are thankfully employers and patients who have come together and it is working. So good, good, that's good, a conversation okay. we can take Thank next. You. Yeah, thanks for pushing. I do want to talk about that more. I'd love to have you on here because this is just because of personal experience and because um, people's health matters to them. The, the two things that matter, to, the three things that matter to people, relationships, money, and health. Okay. Amen. Okay. That's what matters to people. And, and we, as a firm, we're fully immersed in one and, and they, we get questions about all these other things. So how, what can you and I Hal, do together to improve the quality of lives for the people that we know and care about and that come to us for advice? Anyway, how can people reach you? Tell us how they can reach before we get off the phone or sure. off this podcast. Sure. I'm glad to have people call me. The phone number is 770-335-0077. And email, um, is my first name, my first initial and last name. So H S C H L E N G E R at great South benefits. Okay. Dot com. Seven, seven, Oh, three, three, five, zero, zero, seven, seven, great South benefits.com. You got it. All right. Hal, thanks so much for being with us. Let's reconvene at some point in the future and let's dive back into this whole health care thing. And how can we help people? So, all right. You got it. All right. This thanks. is Randy Brunson wrapping it up on uh, stewarding family wealth sponsored by Centurion advisor group. Thanks folks. Talk to you soon.